So good to be with you again today. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, so excited. Take your Bibles, please, take your Bibles and open them to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm gonna meet you there in a few minutes. Um, and I want, I want you to focus with me right now. I know watching at home, you know, you might have me in the background while you're cooking breakfast or you're, or you're drinking your coffee. And all I'm going to ask you to do right now is instead of putting me in the background, bring me up to the foreground. Like, come on, you and me right now, I want to talk to you. Focus. Uh, put, put those other distractions away uh, so that we can have some focused time together around God's word. Now, I'm really excited today. Today is our third Sunday of our series entitled Uncomfortable, the Essential Work of God in Your Life. And we're just talking about this fact, this reality that it's oftentimes in the uncomfortable circumstances and situations that God puts me in that he does the necessary work to transform my life into a, a better example and expression of his love. And so this Sunday we're talking about uncomfortable people uncomfortable people, specifically those people that are a part of the local church. Now, I love the church deeply. Uh, my entire life, I have been fully engaged in some capacity or another with the local church. And, and I love this church, Grace Church of Glendora. If you're not a part of a local church and you're anywhere in our area or you're dialing in with us online, then I would say to you, man, this is an awesome church. I love this church deeply. And I want to talk about today why church can be uncomfortable and why you and why I need to not let that be an excuse to disengage and to avoid and to run away to something else. And the reason is because, why is it uncomfortable? It's because there are imperfect people, and I am one of them that make up the local church. In fact, um, uh, Scott Saul says it this way, being part of the local church means joining your imperfect self to many other imperfect selves to form an imperfect community. That's what makes church uncomfortable, is it's a group of people, of imperfect people, that are joining with other imperfect people to make up an imperfect community that, though through Jesus, embarks on a journey toward a better future together. Right now. Okay. Um... Church is just can be awkward because uh, of the imperfect kind of people that come together. So just to kind of get us started in this conversation a little bit, in any given church, you have extroverts and you have introverts, and then you have people who think they're the perfect blend of both extroverted and introverted people. And this can just sort of make situations um, uh, a, a little awkward. If you've been to church and they get to that greeting time, uh, all the introverts, that's the worst time of the service for them is, oh, you mean I've got to like go shake somebody else's hand or give them a side hug or give them a high five and say good morning. I'd rather just sit in my chair and, and pay attention and not speak to anybody. Then there's the other crowd that just, you know, you can't shut them down. Okay. That creates some uncomfortableness. Um, there's always uncomfortableness when you put a group of people together who have different political viewpoints. This is especially uh, relevant, you know, in our current political environment right now that is just so charged and, and uh, um, so separated. Uh, even this week, I, I, uh, I heard some, some voices telling us that, you know, if you're a member of this uh, political party, then you can't possibly be a follower of Jesus Christ. Or if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then you couldn't possibly ever, you know, vote for this kind of a person. And so anytime you get different people, imperfect people together, and they have a different political viewpoint, um, you know, it can get a little awkward. And then you have, you know, the huggers, the handshakers, and the kissers, you know, and, and that can get a little bit uh, awkward. And, okay, so here's another one. Like, what about, you know, your preference with regards to what kind of worship music, you know, do, do you want to enjoy on a Sunday morning? And I just threw this one in because, you know, we're all having to wear masks. And some of you, 
uh, you know, are just, hey, you're wearing a mask even when you're by yourself, in your shower, in your home. Others of us are like, eh. And then there maybe are, are a few of us is like, no, you're already too close. Like, okay. So all of these things, because they're all present in the local church, they can make us uh, uncomfortable. There's another reason why church can be especially uncomfortable, and that's because the church is meant to be a place where everyone is welcome and everyone is loved. And sometimes people will come to church that are rejected by society and rejected in every other part of their life. But, but we know when we come to church, we're going to be loved, we're supposed to be loved, we're supposed to be welcomed, we're supposed to be accepted. And that can just add to the awkwardness and the uncomfortableness of church. I, I wrote it down this way in my notes. What makes a church great, everyone is welcome and loved, is also what makes a church uncomfortable. Everyone is welcomed and loved. Right? So it can just be a big challenge to stay committed to one another. And what happens sometimes is when we run away from that uncomfortableness, un uncomfortableness in this case we're talking about people, um, we, we avoid the deep hard work that God needs to do inside of us. So what we're talking about in this series is leaning into that uncomfortableness and embracing some of that difficulty so that God can do a special work in and through us. Why? Because we're family, right? And I'm, I'm going to use this term family today because that's the term that God uses to describe what happens when you come to faith in Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13 says this. You're in 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to get there. Just hold on. Hold on right there. Yet to all who did receive him, that is Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Okay, so... Um, John is describing what happens when somebody comes to faith in Jesus Christ. God adopts them into his family. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God, right? So, so when I use the term family, I mean it as literally as I possibly can mean it, because that's what the scripture teaches. When I come to faith in Jesus Christ, God adopts me into his family. And so I become a son and a daughter of God. My wife and I have been fostering for a long time, um, and our current little child that's in our home, uh, her name is Nia. Uh, here she is. And uh, we've had her for um, about eight, 18 months now, 17, 18 months. And uh, we're uh, hoping and praying that God will give us an opportunity, hopefully sometime soon, to adopt her into our family. And, and when, when you adopt, I've never adopted a kid into my family, but I'm looking forward to this. When, when, the, when that paperwork comes down the pike and it's officially uh, stamped and the judge says, now she is a part of your family, John, legally a part of your family. Wow, what a great day that's going to be. And that's what happened when you came to faith in Jesus Christ. He adopted you into his family. He made you his kid uh, in, in every way, shape, and form. And so, and so this is what this passage is talking about. We were not born of a, a husband's will or a human decision, but born of God. And that can be messy and uncomfortable, right? But, but we're now siblings. We're now brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, and this, this creates this family of God. And within that family, it can get difficult because we're imperfect people. Now, uh, I want to meet you now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, starting in verse uh, 12 is where we're going to be. So here it is. I want you to look in your Bible with this. I'll put the text up on the screen. Here's what the Apostle Paul is going to do now. He's going to describe 
this family uh, in terms of it being a body. He's going to use the image of a human body to describe this family that if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are a part of this family. You've been adopted and placed into this family. So here's what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many parts. Okay, so I want to talk to you about three uncomfortable points, okay? So here they are. Uncomfortable point number one. Everyone is welcome and has a part to play in the body of Christ. Everyone, everyone, everyone who has come to faith in Jesus Christ has a part to play in the body of Christ. This is Paul's point. A body is made up of many parts, right? Toes, arms, legs, a head, and each part has a unique purpose. But every part belongs to one body. So it is with the church, Paul says. Now, it's easy to look at the worship team and the pastor and the greeter and, and assume that all of those are important people in the church. But in fact, everyone, Paul says, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, plays a crucial role in the body of Christ. Now, to illustrate this, I've grabbed my potato head. Ha ha, isn't this great? This is such a good illustration of the body of Christ, right? Okay, so you know what this is? This is a potato head, right? So all of these guys, all of these uh, little parts come off and, and, uh, and there's, man, that arm's not wanting to come out. Come on, right? And, and you can, you can kind of, you know, you can put different things. Now, here's, the, here's why this is such a great illustration of the church. It's such a great illustration of the church because the church is one body, but it is made up of a lot of different parts, right? And each part, the Apostle Paul goes on in the rest of this passage, each part has a specific role to play. And one isn't more important than the other. In fact, Paul will say, hey, if the eye says, hey, I'm more important, I'm the whole body. Well, the eye is just one part of the entire body. It has a role and a crucial role to play, but the whole body is not an eye. The whole body is made up of all these different kinds of parts. And so it is with the local church. And this is what can make it uncomfortable. When you come to church and you see somebody with a hat on and it's, you know, turned the other way, that might make you a little bit uncomfortable. Or they look a little bit different than you in worship. Like they're like raising up their hands, praising the Lord. And, and you're like, you know, you're, you're just kind of part of the frozen chosen. And, and that can make you uncomfortable. And that, but that's the beauty of the local church is that it is a conglomeration of different people. Here Paul says, Jew and Gentile, slave or free. I mean, when you think about different kinds of people in the ancient world, and Paul's saying, man, the power of this community of people that are coming together, it's not just that one of them likes, you know, Taco Bell and one of them likes Chick-fil-A. No, it's like slave and free, Jew and Gentile. I mean, these are like opposite sides of the spectrum that the Apostle Paul are saying. But because they, are, they have been adopted into the family of God and, and, um, and put together in this body, sealed by the Holy Spirit, Paul will say in Ephesians chapter 1, this is part of the uncomfortableness and this is part of what we have to learn to embrace and to lean into instead of running away from. Because it's in those moments, it's in those difficult circumstances and those uncomfortable people that God does a work in you and in me. 
And so, yes, we look differently and we, we, we sound different and we, we have different personalities and we have different politics and, and we, we look at life from a different vantage point. And the easy thing to do when you come into close proximity with other people who make you uncomfortable is just to run. But that's not the vision that God has for his church. And you can see it right here in these verses in 1 Corinthians 12. And in fact, as we begin to study in the book of Acts in a couple weeks, we'll begin to understand that the, the amazing movement of God in the early church was that somehow, some way, people from every tribe and tongue and nation were coming together and they were fellowshipping together and learning together and, and, and serving together. And it was this, nobody had been able to accomplish that before. Because the Spirit of God had unified them. Oh, it's so powerful. So the, so the question then, the question in, in light of the fact that everyone is welcome and has a part to play in the body of Christ, the question we should be asking ourselves, even locally about Grace Church of Glendora, is, is not like, does this church hit all the, the boxes of my preferences and my desires? But is this a place, is this a community of people that I can faithfully serve and be committed to as a part of this body? Because it's not about your preferences. It's not about your politics. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That God in his grace and mercy chose to make a way for you to be forgiven and for me to be forgiven and to come to understand how deeply God loves me and how deeply God loves you and how deeply God wants everyone to come and to receive the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ and to follow him in the abundant life that we talked about last week. Okay, so, but that can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable when, when we embrace this idea that everyone is welcome and everyone has a part to play in the body of Christ. Here's uncomfortable point number two from these verses. Being part of the church is really hard. And I just want to point this out. Notice what Paul says. Um, both uh, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. Paul is intentionally, I think, using people who are just on the opposite spectrum of vo vocationally and professionally and just even in life. Paul emphasizes that all who were baptized are part of one body, even the Jews and the Gentiles, the slave or a free. Another way to maybe read this would be, for we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, regardless of background, nationality, social status, political belief, or any other arbitrary dividing line that doesn't matter in the kingdom of God. And this is difficult. This is difficult. Because the reality is, is that living in community with other people and committing to other people, especially people that are different than ourselves, can be really, really hard. There are disagreements and uncomfortable moments and awkward silences and, and frustrations. And it can be easy to just leave and, and to find a place that is decidedly more within your comfort zone. Now, obviously, the scripture teaches that, in general, if you find yourself in an abusive situation, it's absolutely wise and, and, and right on to, to set boundaries and, and to potentially even leave that situation if it's abusive. But, but in general, when it comes to the church and being around uncomfortable people, the scripture consistently invites us to embrace that uncomfortableness and not to run from it. Because it's in the daily challenges and the discomforts of being in community with other people who are different than you 
that God is able to do his essential work inside of you. And this is the reality. The church is perfectly imperfect. No, I love that. The church is perfectly imperfect. And when you choose to follow Jesus, listen to me now. When you choose to follow Jesus, you will be joined by other imperfect people. And then Jesus will lead you to serve and to love other imperfect people that are not like you. That's what he does. And in fact, that's what can make it difficult to follow Jesus. That's what can make it uncomfortable to be a follower of Jesus Christ. In fact, that's what made the early disciples consistently struggle with Jesus and the priority he set to go into spaces that they were uncomfortable with, engage people that they were uncomfortable with. Be it the prostitute, the woman at the well up in Samaria in John chapter 4, or the tax collector. Jesus is consistently seen as, as hanging out with people for whom the disciples are like, why are you doing that? They don't belong to the kingdom of God. And Jesus on many occasions said, no, no, if you're going to follow me, this is not an insider group. This is a group. This is a mission. This is a mandate. This is, this is an uncomfortable mission too. And it involves serving people that are not like you. So instead of searching for a church full of people who look like you and think like you and act like you and believe like you, all of us need to embrace the tension and the struggle of being a part of a church community that teaches us and invites us and leads us into uncomfortable spaces. <laughs> because when, when we follow Jesus across the street and we follow Jesus across the aisle and we follow Jesus into that uncomfortable space or circumstance, it's in those moments that the power and love of Christ flows through me and it changes me while I show the love of Christ to somebody else. So, so powerful. And that, but, but it's uncomfortable because it's difficult. It's hard. Given a choice, we would just much rather not go there. But Jesus invites us to go there. It's difficult to think of others as more important than yourself. To put their needs and their desires and their preferences and, and, and just to put them above yourself. That's difficult, and yet it's in those difficult situations that God does his necessary work in our life. Now, here, one more. Here, one more. Oh, this is good. Uncomfortable point number three. Write this down. Although we are different, we are united in the most important way by the Spirit of God. So, so although we are all different, the body of Christ is made up of all of these different imperfect people, but the common thing that we have, notice this in, in, um, in verse uh, 13, we are all given uh, the one spirit to drink. In other words, Paul is saying we are united together, not by our preferences, not by uh, our background, not by our culture, but by the spirit of God. The thing that we have in common with one another, though we are radically different from one another, and that can, that can be, cause some tension, but the thing that is common to all of us is we have experienced the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Oh, my. That's, that's what we have in common, and that's what binds us together. When we come to faith in Jesus Christ and we confess our sins, and he forgives us of our sins and adopts us into his family and declares us to be his child, when that happens, we have far more in common than we do in difference. And the commonality is simply this. And this is so easy to forget. It's so easy to forget this. So church, church, hear now this word. 
Hear now this word. This is so powerful. It's easy to forget this. But the church, the redeemed body of Christ, is made up of those who have been forgiven of their sins by Jesus Christ, who have a love for Jesus Christ and a desire to love others with the love that Jesus has placed inside of us. That's what unites us. The very Spirit of God doing a work inside of each and every one of us. So, it's really, really important that we not ignore the uncomfortableness that comes with being committed to other people who are different than us. But to see those differences and to, and to lean into the uncomfortableness and the discomfort of that as a means for God to do an essential work in my life life and in your life and in the life of our church there is a a redemptive purpose that God has by putting you in an uncomfortable situation by placing you around people that might be uh, that might make you uncomfortable there is a redemptive purpose in that and a restorative purpose in that. And when we ignore that or we run from that, we miss out on the vision that God has for the local church. And as we get into the book of Acts and we study the movement of God through the local church there in the early church in Acts, we'll see this uh, page after page after page. And oh, how powerful this is, how wonderful this is, how how um, just majestic this is when we understand that the, the uncomfortableness is a means for God to do a great work inside of me. And as he does that work inside of me, um, people are attracted to that. They're not attracted to me, but they're attracted to this, this movement of God we call the, the church. We are stones, Paul will say, as we talked about last week, being chiseled and smoothed and refined together. And it can be painful, but the house is being built by the Spirit of God. And it is a magnificent, beautiful picture of God's grace and God's mercy. So I want to ask you right now as we close, uncomfortable people, who are the uncomfortable people that God has placed in your life. Just right now, would you, would you bow your head and just close your eyes and just put that person in your mind? Who is that one person that you would say, you know, John, I'm uncomfortable with this person. And then just begin to ask God for an opportunity this week not to run from that sense of discomfort, but to walk right into it and to express in the most practical of ways God's grace and mercy. And the only way you're gonna do that, friend, is if you have received the grace and mercy that God has for you. Because we're all imperfect. We're all sinners. And it's while I was still in my sin and my rebellion against God that he sent his son Jesus Christ to make a way for me to be forgiven. So right now I want to invite you to just pray this prayer with me. Just pray it silently uh, as, I, as I lead you. God, thank you for the uncomfortable people you've placed in my life. Thank you for the opportunities it gives me to express your grace and your mercy and your love. And thank you, God, that, um, that you're calling me into those places because you want to do a great essential work inside of me. And so, God, this week, would you give me um, an opportunity to express your love and your grace and your mercy uh, to somebody else in the same way that you have done it for me? 
In Jesus' name I pray.